This is the Church of Now podcast. We appreciate you listening, and our prayer today is that we can bring insight to help you become a better leader, no matter what generation you're a part of. Hey, welcome back. Uh, This is uh, a new thing that we're doing, that in the middle of the month, that second-ish Friday of the month, I'm going to be diving into a passage of scripture uh, that kind of relates to the Church of Now. There also might be a couple of interviews that happen in the middle of the month that I'm releasing. And so, you know, if you were a part of the podcast and you listened to the podcast early on, then you know that uh, a lot of it was guest oriented. And so we'd bring on different ministers, uh, whether they had just started in ministry um, or whether they had been in ministry for a long time. um, And we just interviewed them and said, hey, you know, what does the church of now look like for you? And so uh, we're going to bring that back a little bit, and I'm excited for that. Uh, We're going to bring back some of the old guests that were here the first time, but also hopefully some new guests so that we can really talk about what it looks like to be in the church of now. Um, And uh, from from what you all have showed me with uh, uh, listens and things like that on the podcast, uh, you all have enjoyed hearing those guests over and over again. So we're going to bring that back. And so there will be a couple months where there might be a a guest, there might be a passage of scripture we walk through, um, but from here on out, the middle Friday of the month and the last Friday of the month is when these podcasts will release. Now, they could look different. They could be different as in that middle month could be the leadership stuff, it could be the guest stuff, it could be the scripture stuff, and same thing for the last part of the month. But uh, we are going to be releasing uh, those different uh, podcast from here on out twice a month. So I'm excited for that. Uh, there's this, there's a story. And as I start to think about the, the church of now, um, you know, none of this comes from anything that I've created on my own. Um, a lot of this comes from scripture. All of it comes from scripture. And so we wouldn't be here today. We wouldn't have this podcast. We wouldn't be having this conversation and people wouldn't be buying into the idea of the church of now, if it wasn't for Jesus. And it wasn't the impact that he made on the world. I mean, ultimately, uh, because of Jesus and because of who he is, we see that people all throughout Scripture have the ability to make a difference in God's kingdom. And that's now in the moment. And that doesn't discriminate against age or gender or race. Like God says that every single person has a role in the kingdom. And I believe that's true. And God has a plan for you, and he has a plan for me, and he has a plan for everybody. The people that we like, the people we don't like, the people who are younger than us, the people who are older than us, the people who don't have the experience that maybe you do, and the people that have more experience than you do. God says that we all have a place in the church of now. You know, you think of the the early church in Acts chapter 2 who were willing to do anything that they could to help people come to know Jesus. That took everybody. It wasn't just one person. It took everybody. And so I keep coming back to this uh, this little boy in Scripture that honestly doesn't get a lot of attention. Um, and we really don't know a whole lot of details about him. But over the last couple of weeks, I have continually been thinking about the impact that this little boy made. And honestly, I'm not sure that he uh, knew the impact that he was going to make. And I'm not even sure that he woke up that day saying, yes, I'm, I'm going to go make an impact. It just kind of happened that he was in the right situation at the right time, in the right moment. And man, God used him for the good. What a beautiful thing. So it's in John chapter 6. And many of you all might be, be familiar with the story. Uh, but basically, Jesus finds himself in a situation where there's a crowd, and they're the him and some of the disciples are trying to say, "Man, what do we do here? Like, there's so many people. How are we going to feed them? How are we going to feed them?" And, and, and this is kind of what it says, John chapter six, verse one. Sometime after this, uh, Jesus crossed to the far shore of the Sea of Galilee, and a great crowd of people followed him because they saw the signs he had performed by healing the sick. Then Jesus went up onto a mountainside, sat down with his disciples. The Jewish Passover Passover festival was near. 
When Jesus looked up and saw a great crowd coming toward him, he said to Philip, Where shall we buy bread for these people to eat? He asked this only to test him, for he already had in mind what he was going to do. Jesus knew that there was a plan. He knew he was who he was going to use, and he, he kind of prepared the situation to happen the way that it unfolded. And Philip answered him, It would take more than half a year's wages to buy enough bread for each one to have a bite. I don't know about you, but this indicates a lot of people. And also, if I had to spend <laughs> that much money, more than a half year's wages, for one meal, I'm not sure I could do it. And so they're really confused. They're really trying to figure it out. Another one of his disciples, Andrew, uh, Simon Peter's brother, spoke up. And he says, here is a little boy, or he, the passage actually says, here is a boy, we don't exactly know his age, with five small barley loaves and two small fish. But how far will they go among so many? A lot of times, and man, this is, it's a beautiful miracle of what Jesus is about to do. Because Jesus takes those five loaves of fish, and, or sorry, five loaves of bread and two fish, and he does more than anybody could have ever imagined. We see that in Ephesians chapter 3, verse 20, that he can do immeasurably more through us than we could ever ask or imagine. And I can imagine in this little boy's, or I keep saying little, I don't exactly know, but this boy's life, that he saw Jesus do more than he ever thought could happen. I don't know the disciples were the same way. They, were, they didn't exactly understand you know, how was Jesus going to use this? How was he going to do this? But Jesus takes the bread, he takes the fish, and he disperses his disciples out. And he says, hey, go and, go and make a difference. Go and do something special with this. And because of Jesus, it, it tells us in Scripture uh, that there were 5,000 men. 5,000 men that were fed that day. Watch this. Jesus said, have the people sit down. There was plenty of grass in that place. And they sat down. About 5,000 men were there. And Jesus took the loaves, gave thanks, and distributed to those who were seated as much as they wanted. He did the same with the fish. When they had all had enough, when they were all full to eat, he said to his disciples, Gather the pieces that are left over, let nothing be wasted. So they gathered them, and watch this, and filled twelve baskets with the pieces with the pieces of the five barley loaves left over by those who had eaten. After the people saw the sign Jesus performed, they began to say, Surely this is the prophet who is to come into the world. Jesus, knowing that they intended to come and make him king by force, withdrew again to a mountain by himself. I mean, this, this speaks to the goodness of God. This, this miracle, this, I mean, it's just crazy to think about. But I want you to think about the boy. Because what if that boy was like, hey, no, this is, uh, this is just for my family. Could have done that. What if he would have said, no, I'm actually taking this back to my workplace. I, I'm not able to share it. Or what if he would have just made any kind of excuses? Like, no, this is all that I have. This is it. Like, I can't do anything else with it. What if that's what the boy would have done? If he wouldn't have said yes, and he wouldn't have given Jesus all that he had, then I'm not sure we would see that story today. Or hear that story today. And so what do you need to give them? What do you need to give to God? Because this boy gave him what he had. He said, I've only got five loaves. I've only got two fish. There's 5,000 men here. And so what we know, you know, looking at scripture, what we know about context and history, is that if there's 5,000 men there, then there probably means that there's wife and kids there, so you know, you're looking at at least maybe ten thousand, fifteen thousand. 
Jesus feeding that many people? I mean, first of all, the process of getting it to everybody had to be insane. But also, just the ability of what God could do with what the boy had. Again, Ephesians 3.20. He can do immeasurably more than all we ask or imagine. We've just got to serve him. We've got to say yes. We've got to do something special. We've got to pour into uh, the life that we have with Jesus. We've got to allow him to live. It also says in Ephesians that we become a dwelling place where, G- where God lives. And if that's true, then that means that we are going to allow him to do some really good work. That we're going to allow him to work in our lives so that ultimately he can do more with our lives than we could ever imagine. And I believe that that's the story of that boy in that story. I wonder what his face was like when he saw what Jesus did with it. I wonder exactly what his disciples did when he found out, when they found out what Jesus did. When they saw him tearing apart those pieces and distributing them out. What does it look like? What does it look like for you? It's a beautiful story. But I believe that God can use you in the same way that he used that boy. That boy was a part of the church of now. Back then. But today, because of his decision to give up what he had back then to Jesus, you and I are impacted by it in this moment. And that's what happens in the church of now. That's what happens when we give everything we have. When we say yes... You never know what can happen. As we talked about before, your decisions today to say yes to Jesus daily and give him everything that you have can make an impact for generations to come, years and years and years down the road. And so what does that look like? Are you going to be like the boy and give Jesus what you had and allow him to do more with it than you could ever ask or imagine? Or are we going to be like, ah, I can't. And it's scary. I'm sure that boy may have been like, yeah, I don't know how that's going to work. He probably had questions. But the good news is that he said yes, and Jesus did some really cool stuff with it. So I I love that story. It's been on my mind over the last couple of weeks. I've really enjoyed it. Um, And it really makes me think, man, you know, what what do I need to give to him and allow him to do more than I could ever imagine? Um, And and in reality, there's probably a lot. And so I'm working through that as well. And so I wonder what that is for you. Hey, uh, the Church of Now, again, uh, podcast is going to be start coming out uh, every two weeks, really. Um, but also, if you want to dive deeper into this, I have a book called The Church of Now. Um, it's on Amazon, and it's only on Amazon for 10 bucks. That's not bad. Um, it used to be 15 We dropped the price down to 10 bucks. We wanted to make it easier for people to buy. Um, but I would challenge you, hey, buy it for a friend. Buy it for... Um, a grandkid, buy it for a parent, buy it for a kid, uh, whoever that is in your life, uh, maybe it's a future minister, maybe it is a minister currently, but buy that for them because I believe that if we can get the church of now idea out there, then it's really going to make a difference because the reality is young people aren't the church of the future, uh, old people aren't the church of the past. They, we all have a, a part to play in the story now. We're all a part of the church now. And when we realize that, then I fully believe that we can go along with the mission of God to go out and make disciples of all nations.